Adlitiya 200 Mbps speed deka ke. Sri Lanka ve vegavat masaha pulul tama home broadband sambandh taave vana. SLT Mobitel deshe fiber bala vege opat adam atvidinna. Hari masudui. First at 9, this Wednesday, the 2nd of August, 2023. Health gets 30. President directs 30 billion rupee dispensation to the Health Ministry for urgent medicines. Kehelia reforms. Health Minister Kehelia Rambukwala announces landmark reform with the repeal of NMRA and SLMC Acts. UNP unbanned. Minister Harin Fernando and Manushana Nayakara have their UNP memberships reinstated following their SJB suspensions. Exports explode. Sri Lanka's Export Development Board aims to increase exports to $31 billion by 2027. Alliance Finance Metro Run Nai Seva Ven. Run Pound Cutter, Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Dhasaka, Ehla Atti Karuma. Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain, then Lagamethi Pharmacy in Labaka The Hacker. This is Ada Verna First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I am Shanella Fernando in your top stories for tonight. The President's media division in a statement today said that the President directed authorities to formulate a new medical act within six months with the aim of addressing shortcomings in the present medical ordinance. The statement said that on the President's directives to the MR, NMRA rather, to expedite the approval process for FDA-approved drugs and reference drugs from other countries that collaborated with the Health Ministry, the NMRA saw to obtain cabinet approval to make the necessary amendments to the NMRA Act that will ensure faster access to critical medications. A discussion related to the health sector was held today at the President's office under the chairmanship of President Ranil Vikramasinghe and the ministers in charge of the subject and ministry officials. In order to protect the health and well-being of the people, the President has instructed that a new medical bill be compiled and presented within six months. It was also decided that an additional provision of 30 billion rupees be dispensed under the provisions of the Ministry of Health to meet urgent medical needs for the next three months. The President instructed the Ministry of Health and the National Drug Regulatory Authority to submit proposals for establishing laboratory facilities with the World Health Organization's Benchmark 4 to assess the quality, safety and efficacy of medical products. We can. We can. We can. Theoretically, we can. Theoretically, we can. Then we decide and uh, yeah. we go for okay. Benchmark 4. To give us first paper on how you achieve a Benchmark 4 yeah. and what are the steps to be taken and a time frame. Yeah. And okay. then with that, what are the other resources that are required? So if you or prepare that and give, give us a report. Give. Prepare so. amendments to the medical ordinance and to the regulations with the involvement of a high-level committee comprising Secretary, Health, Legal Draftman, the President, SLMC and submit it to the Cabinet. I think, I be think you all should have a yes, committee sir, yes, which uh, will draft a medical act. Yeah. yeah, sir, actually we have uh, started working no, on no, it no. at the Council. Hope in a few months' time we should be no, ready I, with I, it. Sorry. Following the meeting with the President, Health Minister Kehilia Rambukwala confirmed that the National Medicines Regulatory Authority and Sri Lanka Medical College Acts rather will be repealed and restructured to allow for a more free and fair market. The Minister tweeted that repealing the Acts are paramount to ensure reform and that no drug monopolies would unduly benefit at the cost of the people. The Minister went on to add that additionally the nursing vocation will be opened up for students who study all education streams and not just those who study science. He further confirmed that guidance will be sought from the WHO to implement an accredited benchmark for laboratory for drugs testing in Sri Lanka. The minister concluded by reiterating his commitment to ensuring that the health sector does not collapse because of the political intentions of other parties.
The Central Bank of Sri Lanka issuing a statement today regarding designated foreign currencies in the country. The statement read that all foreign designated currencies are only to promote trade and investment relations between the two countries and not for domestic payments and settlements. The statement was issued to clarify misconceptions regarding foreign designated currencies, including the Indian rupee. The Indian rupee was recently authorized by the Central Bank for transactions with Indian exporters and as such, Clarity was given as to why the rationale for authorizing designated currencies is to minimize transaction costs and support the transactions through legal channels. The central bank said that the main purpose of authorizing foreign currencies as designated foreign currencies is to promote trade and investment relations between the two countries and would reduce the additional transaction costs associated with dual conversion, concurrently supporting the promotion of trade transactions through formal banking channels. With the trade between both countries rapidly growing following the Indo-Sri Lankan Free Trade Agreement which came into force in March 2000, the CBSL said that the decision to authorise the Indian rupee was taken after communicating with the Reserve Bank of India, the Monetary Authority of India and with the agreement of it being subject to any restrictions imposed by the Reserve Bank of India. As such, in August 2022, with the concurrence of the Reserve Bank of India, the Indian rupee was authorised by the CBSL as a designated foreign currency in Sri Lanka. However, the CBSL maintained that the legal tender in Sri Lanka for domestic payments and settlements will remain wholly the Sri Lankan rupee. And authorization of Indian rupees as a designated currency does not make it a legal tender in Sri Lanka for domestic payments or settlements. The party ban imposed on Ministers Harin Fernando and Manusha Nanayakara by the United National Party was lifted today. That is according to a decision taken by the Working Committee of the Party, which met today at the Sirikota Party headquarters. Mete Paksi Krutyati Karman Lea, Tahanamat Lakula Timuna Manusa Nana Karamatumata, Harim Parand Matmata, Exajati Paksi Krutyati Kariman Lea, Atura Kirimata, Paksa Tindu Karagat. Sri Lanka's ruling party Podujana Peramuna MP Gamini Lokuge said that the party has not decided on a preferred candidate for the coming presidential election next year. Moreover, a party member will be selected as opposed to supporting a common candidate. However, Labour and Foreign Employment Minister Banusha Nanaikara said that a majority of all parties have agreed to support President Ranil Vikramasinghe as the candidate for the coming election. Meanwhile, MP Ranjit Madhu Bandara of the main opposition, Samugijana Balavegya, said that the opposition is confident that the motion will get the support of a majority of MPs in the ruling party. May when a vita, Raji Rohalula, Vishala behead Pramania Kadui, Vasara Katulata, White Devaru, Hatsia Gadia, Ratadala Gilati, Meseti, the Saukamatuma, Saharaja Mukudan, let you dear Katu. May some Mandu then up Kriamar Ki Pacarantino, Parliament to Isas Mangio Janagero, Mahitra and Dupakshi Manturu, Vishala Pirisa, Rudha Shakshi, a Kangaw, may Visas Manga Chandid in last year. Andu Pihitwa de Kasi Panas Satati, Vishin is also Jana di Patipat Karadi Ranil Kumasing Mahatma Kasiti Satrai. Make the Apikino, Ekahi to Edia Piadukurno. Kelly to the Viswas Banga Tao, Tapiak of the Hilu de Barak Sakarno. Then Pahuke Kale, which is even got Tam Amaturia, Punjila make a kidney kinker necker, bait matra then a Kamaturia again, Amaturia Karane, I duro Nidishkan a bait, Tatagani, a bait Pavichikar no whatever Prasna Katiro, Amatur anime, what can only visit no way duro. Barney, 
ඉතා මෙහෙම මතයක් නැහැ නෑ නෑ ශ්‍රී ලංකාන දස් පක්ෂය නැවත එහෙම සන්ධානයක් ගොඩනගන්නේ නැහැයි කියලා පක්ෂයේ සභාපතිතුමා සමාජයක සභාව ප්‍රකාශ කරලා තියෙනවා ඉදිරියේදී වාමවාදී දේශප්‍රේමී ජාතිකවාදී සියලු බලවේග සමග දැවැන්ත පෙරමුණක් පොදු ජාතික වැඩපිළිවෙලකට එකතු වෙන්නට අපි කටයුතු කරමින් ඉන්නවා නියමිත වශයෙන් මැතිවරණයක් පැවැත්විය යුතුය ඒ නිසා ලබන අවුරුද්දේ මැතිවරණ වර්ෂයක් බවට පත් වේවි ජනාධිපතිවරණයෙන් පටන්ගෙන ජනාධිපතිවරණයට රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ ජනාධිපතිතුමා පොදුවේ සියලු පක්ෂවල එකඟතාවයෙන් ඉදිරිපත් වෙනවා විපක්ෂයේ කීප දිනක් විතරක් වෙනත් අපේක්ෂකයන්ට එක්ක එකතු වෙලා වැඩ කරයි හැබැයි විපක්ෂවල ඉන්න බොහෝ දිනක් දේශපාලනයේ අමතක කරලා රට දියුණු කරන්න ඕනේ කියන හැම දිනාම දැනට මේ වෙනුවෙන් එකතු වෙලා වැඩ කරන්න හැමත්ත පල කරලා ඉන්නවා The naked corpse of an unidentified individual was recovered from the Kaduwala area yesterday. The individual, identified to be between 30 and 40 years of age, is believed to have been a victim of severe assault wounds. Meanwhile, several casualties were reported following a collision of a passenger bus and a truck this afternoon. One woman died and 15 others were reportedly injured. With that, let's take a look at more news in brief. The naked body of an unidentified individual was recovered near Lake Road in Kaduvela. The deceased, who is believed to be aged between 30 and 40 years old, has reportedly suffered assault injuries. Police suspect that the victim had been beaten to death prior to being abandoned in the Lake Road area. However, the identity of the deceased is yet to be uncovered and further investigations are being conducted by the Kaduvela police. Meanwhile, in Tulhiria this afternoon, several casualties were reported when a passenger bus collided with a truck. One woman has passed away and 15 others were reported injured following the tragic accident. The victims are receiving medical attention at the Warakapola Police Base Hospital, while Warakapola Police is currently conducting further investigations into the matter. On Saturday, a Sri Lankan family residing in Melbourne, Australia had been attacked by a gang of four. The victims surmised that the theft of their car could well serve to be the motive behind the act. However, a 17-year-old was arrested and investigations in search of others are currently underway. Sri Lanka bags four goals at the 12th Bali International Choir Festival 2023. The Soul Sounds Academy and few soloists won gold medals in the solo classical music and children's choir category. The Soul Sounds Academy returned to Sri Lanka yesterday winning four goals at the 12th Bali International Choir Festival 2023. The Soul Sounds Academy conducted by Shivanti Subramaniam and directed by Soundri David Rodrigo as well as soloist Shanuk Vijay Singh and Rakita Vidya Patige won gold medals in the solo classical music and children's choir category respectively. Additionally, Shanuk Vijay Singh also emerged a category winner in the competition. The Bali International Choir Festival, one of the most reputed choral festivals in the world, welcomes choirs each year from around the world. This year there were over 92 choirs and over 4000 participants at the event. More news on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Godo mata perali karana bala pulu ankarya. Mahindra Juvo, Timo Vitin. වැඩම ගොඩයි ගොඩම තමයි ස්වරාජ් ට්‍රැක්ටර් ඩීමෝ විතින් වෙල්කම් බැක් ඉන් මෝ නිවුස් ශ්‍රී ලංකාස් එක්ස්පෝට් ඩෙවලොප්මන්ට් බෝඩ් සෙඩ් දැට් ඉට් ප්ලෑන්ස් ටු ඉන්ක්‍රීස් ද කන්ට්‍රීස් එක්ස්පෝට්ස් ටු 31.3 බිලියන් යුඑස් ඩොලර්ස් වුදින් ද නෙක්ස්ට් 4 යර්ස් ඉෂුවිං ඇ ස්ටේට්මන්ට් ද ඊඩීබී හෝප්ස් ටු ඉන්ක්‍රීස් ද මාකට් ෂෙයර් ඔෆ් ද එක්සිස්ටින් ෆෝරින් මාකට්ස් ඔෆ් ශ්‍රී ලංකා බයි 2027 වල් ඔල්සෝ පෙනෙට්‍රේටින් නිව් පොසිබල් මාකට්ස් ඇන්ඩ් දැ බයි ඉන්ක්‍රීසින් ද කන්ට්‍රීස් එක්ස්පෝට්ස් In a statement issued today, the Export Development Board said that it is now in the process of developing a five-year strategic plan from 2023 to 2027, with the objective of increasing Sri Lanka's exports to $31.3 billion by 2027. The plan also encompasses increasing market share of Sri Lanka in the top 10 existing export markets, namely the USA, UK, India, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Canada, the UAE, Belgium and France, by 10% annually. It also stated that the board is in the process of identifying 10 to 15 potential new markets and increasing the market share of the selected markets by 5% annually. 
EDB said that it plans to EDB says that it plans to promote customized value-added products and services to the identified niche markets with premium prices and carrying out product market analyses on high-end niche markets in addition to disseminating their findings with the exporter community. The EDB has set a forecast performance of $18.51 billion in merchandise and service exports in 2023. This comprises of $15.93 billion from merchandise exports, up from $13.01 billion achieved in 2022, and $2.58 billion from service exports. Minister of Plantation Industries Ramesh Patirana says that a revenue of 1.2 billion US dollars can be expected from tea exports this year as the yield of tea this year has increased due to the prevailing positive weather conditions. Meanwhile, he further emphasized on the establishment of the second coconut triangle in the northern province, adding that it will enhance coconut production of the country. Or Sulabata Vesaha, Metekal Pavaticha, Yahapat, Kalunka Tatri, Hetwin, Tenish Padane, Vadivella Tibena, Junima Sausan Renavita, Sri Lanka, Tenish Padane, Kilo Million, Ekasia, Tishata, Dakwa Vadula, Tanapuro Katana and Tanua, Nevasare, the Ape, Tenish Padane, Kilogram Million, Desia Suak, Pamanavi, Evasare, the Ape, Dollar, Billion, Ekadas, Medeka, Dama Clabuna, Samasta, Te Apanayan, Nevasare, the Pistras Kanoa, Nevatawata, Capita E, Ilake, Sapura, Ganima Hakiway, Givasare, the Kedima Pirabar, Apan. Nut, dollar billion acre Adama Kupeganatibuna, the May Vasaredi, Nakisia Madui Maktibuna, Illumi, Katatamai, a tea rubber pole, Apanana Bogasa, Angalum, Atlus, Silum, Apanan, Kisiam, Apagamanak, Penum, connected Hate with my Loki, Arctic Arbu de Actibuna, America, Vasa, Europe, Atul Rotavala Tibana, Art Kaupati, Hetwin, May Vasaredi, Aumashin, rubber, Apanan in Apita, dollar million Namasi Akata, Asana, Adama, Apit Labag and Pulwanwe, Sri Lanka Pol Nishpadananta. Loki Luma Catuman Tibano, Mavasret, Aramoshe Napita, Dollar Milliana, Hatsiaka Adika Daimak, Polas Tita Panana, Labagan Pulanuka, Etekmapi, Janadipa to Market Shisha, Ilimata, Utru Palate, Poltriconia, Sri Lanka, Devana Poltriconia, Utru Palate, Stapanekran, Mayor the Katu to Kana, September Mas Devanida, Loka Poldinia, Samagami, Triapane, Chapedru to Manaramsa, Mulati, Kokila Pradesh, Avarni and Paradi, Utru Palate, Siluma district, Mulati, Vaunia, Kilinochisa, Yapan district, and Avarni and Paradi, Mavasran. Yatma Kramin, Vishesha, Pravardana Kran, a Pesri Lanka Polish Padin, Vishala Shaktiak, Ture Poltricon in Labevi Kelat, a Pishaskano. Sri Lanka sold 180 billion rupees worth of treasury bills at an auction held today, with yields falling across maturities as compiled by data from the central bank. The central bank sold all offered 80 billion rupee bills in three month bills at 19.90%, down by six basis points from a week earlier after offering 80 billion rupees. All offered 55 billion rupee bills in six month bills were sold at 17.57% down by 12 basis points while all offered 45 billion rupee bills of 12 month bills were sold at 14.16% down by 13 basis points from a week earlier. Sri Lankan shares closed higher for the fourth straight session today, aided by gains in banking sector counters. The old share price index closed up 0.53% at 11,446.83 points, gaining for a fourth straight session. Commercial Bank, DFCC Bank and the National Development Bank were the top gainers on the Colombo Stock Exchange old share index, rising 2.8%, 6.82% and 4 0.44% respectively. Trading volume on the old share price index fell to 89.3 million shares from 91.8 million shares in the previous session. Market turnover grew to 3.8 billion Sri Lankan rupees from 2.75 billion rupees in the previous session. The banking sector was the top contributor to market turnover, while the capital goods sector was the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net sellers of loading stocks worth 323.5 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers sold shares worth 200 323.6 million rupees. Now let's have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day.
Oil prices surged today, trading near their highest level since April, buoyed by crude and fuel product inventory data showing robust U.S. demand. Meanwhile, crude oil inventories have also started to fall in other areas as demand outpaced supply, which has been restrained by significant production cuts from OPEC, which have supported prices. Brent crude futures for October were up 44 cents to $85.35 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude for September climbed 48 cents to $81.85 a barrel. U.S. crude inventories fell by 15.4 million barrels in the week ended July 28th, compared with analyst estimates for a drop of 1.37 million barrels. Gasoline inventories fell by 1.7 million barrels compared with estimates for a 1.3 million barrel drop. Distillate stocks fell by 510,000 barrels compared with analysts' estimates for a build of 112,000 barrels. Both are indicators of robust prompt fuel demand in the U.S. Crude oil inventories have also begun to drop in other regions as demand outpaced supply, which has been constrained by deep production cuts from OPEC Plus that has provided price support. Analysts expect Saudi Arabia to extend its voluntary oil output cut of 1 million barrels per day for another month to include September in a meeting of producers on Friday. Concerns that oil buying in China remain as the world's biggest oil importer may slow as prices rise. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Shanela Fernando. Have a good night. and information you can trust 24 hours a day. Visit adaverna.lk.